Hey buddies, Potemic Whiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI Gathering Storm with the New Frontier Pass as the Congolese Empire. Our main objective this episode is to start getting our theatre squares finished and to start settling all of this land over here to the southeast. Then we want to also see if we can't find more islands in the far south here. I see a lot of fishing resources in this direction which may indicate there's extra land in the fog of war. When you're going for any type of victory, more land is king. If you can get your hands on more cities and more land to utilize, you're going to have a massive advantage when you're going for your victory condition. So that's why that's the focus of this episode. I have to make a decision about where I want to settle this settler, however. I could settle on this Plains Hill, which would give me more access to these northern tiles with an okay harbor. Or I could settle slightly more south, which would force me to settle more desert tiles, but I would have a better harbour and roughly the same amount of access. It all depends on how badly I want this horse tile because I think that's the real swing here. If I settle on the Plains Hill and get the horses really early, this city could be an absolute powerhouse thanks to the bananas and the silk. But if I settle down here, I get a better harbour in the long run, but uh, it'll take a long time for that to kick in. I think in the interest of having more and better cities, I will go ahead and settle the Plains Hill. If I settle the Plains Hill, I can safely settle on the edge of this desert and still have access to reasonable tiles, which means I just have higher qualities in my city overall. Whereas if I settle here, I'll have to settle really, really far away from these grass tiles, which means this city will be so much worse. Settling this hill tile also gives me a really, really good buffer with the Ottomans over here. I got my government plaza in Abanza Congo and my plan is to continue to mass settle. So I'm going to go ahead and appoint Magnus, but I'm not going to put him in my capital just yet. First, I'm going to go ahead and get to work on the ancestral hall. I'll also place the harbor in the city um, just to lock in its price at the lower price. And once I finish the ancestral hall, I'll go ahead and promote Magnus with the provision promotion and perhaps even the surplus logistics promotion to get people trading with my capital. Let's place a harbor in Embuila. I don't really want to get theater squares in this city just yet, but instead I'm actually going to work on a monument because I need this city to start expanding its borders uh, in order to claim some of these tiles away from Ethiopia. Let's buy the horse tile in Embuila and then go ahead and build a pasture on it. That gives this city an incredible tile to work, which will hopefully help it along. There is a slight little bit of negative loyalty here, but I'm not worried about that because this city has really, really, really strong growth. And I'm actually gonna work that banana tile too to try to take advantage of that growth to get extra loyalty. I am heading into a dark age, which means I might need to use a governor to protect the loyalty of this city, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it in four turns and get our next governor title. This is also going to be a city where I place my harbour first, because I don't want to place my theatre square on some of these tiles just yet. And I'm also going to work on a monument in here to get the borders growing, but I'll grab a builder and then get the monument. We just got the boost for mathematics, which is excellent. That's going to net us an extra little bit of error score. Not that that matters because we're heavily in the negative. But the cool thing is this actually did get me an apostle and I can put that apostle to some good use. I do get the full benefits from Islam which is feed the world and meeting houses which are both completely irrelevant to me like I was talking about in the first episode. Most of the religious bonuses are actually tied to having holy sites and I have none so Islam doesn't really do a whole lot for me but I can get indulgence vendor on this guy and get a little bit of gold out of converting cities. Now that we have the theater square in Kinshasa we need to start making some other hard decisions. I I could go ahead and rush for the amphitheater. That would allow me to get my great riders a little bit sooner. I don't really have any good tile improvements to place here, except maybe a lumber mill on this forest, which I think is worthwhile to pick up a builder before I go for the amphitheater, because any production improvement is amazing for me. And I'll still have two build charges that I can send off to other cities to help them out. Mabanza Mbata is also in a similar boat. It just finished its amphitheater and I would love to start working on that immediately. But this is kind of a border city, so I'd rather have ancient walls in here to keep it safe. And I'm even going to upgrade this archer so that I get the boost for machinery, uh, which will allow me to unlock crossbowmen easier and this city will be better defended. That said, Nubia doesn't really hate me, so this might not be necessary, but this is definitely my most vulnerable city at the moment. 
I'm getting amazing scouting information with these galleys. I know exactly where all the land is on this eastern side of the continent. Looks like Ethiopia is willing to sell me some iron for a little bit of open borders and horses. And I think that's a pretty reasonable deal because I would like the era score in the next era from unlocking my unique unit. Speaking of which, I'm going to unlock the Nagao and Bebo right after I get construction for lumber mills. Thankfully, the Ottomans are also in a dark age, which means the loyalty in Ambans and Asundi isn't really that big of a deal. Which also means I don't need to spend my governor title on another one of these governors to occupy the city. And instead I can go ahead and pick up Connoisseur on Pingala and get a little bit of extra culture. That's going to bring me up from 12 culture per turn up to 18 culture. So that's a pretty significant boost. That's a 50% increase in my culture. This is going to be the era where I build a lot of uh, great work buildings. So I will go for pen, brush and voice. I'd also, I think my next pickup is um, military tradition for the flanking and support bonuses. And I also want to go ahead and head towards veterancy here because that'll give me a 30% production boost towards my harbors. I also want games and recreation for the entertainment complex so this fits really really nicely into my game plan. Once I have these I'll almost certainly head towards feudalism for the serfdom card that gives me an extra two build actions on my builders which is a huge benefit especially since I plan to settle a bunch of cities this era which lines up really nicely with the Ancestral Hall, giving me a free builder every time I settle a city. I'm going to try to force the luxury ban onto Gypsum. Amanator is the only person that has Gypsum. Um, it's likely that a lot of people are going to vote for something like wine, silk and truffles, but I'm hoping that if I put enough votes onto Gypsum, I can force them off that. Um, I could alternatively vote for Ivory, but I do have a copy of Ivory that I plan to improve. So if I can force it for Gypsum, it means I lose none of my benefits from my amenities. In terms of military advisory, I think the best thing is to usually just go for ranged units and hope that the AI agrees. It looks like most people voted for Salt instead of Gypsum, so I think I get a refund on some of my diplomatic favor. And it looks like I did manage to succeed in predicting that it was range units that would win the vote. That nets me a diplomatic victory point, which it could be a possible idea to pivot from a culture victory to a diplomatic victory because they both kind of line up in your goals. Ambuila is a little bit of a problem. I didn't really check this city and the loyalty is really, really bad. I'm going to pop Magnus in there temporarily, but I really need another governor title to actually take care of this city because it's not where I want to put Pingala. I would much rather put Pingala in somewhere like Kinshasa or even Abuji Mai, which has a really, really good population right now. I was hoping to clear this barb camp with my warrior and archer and using the galley as an escort, but I don't think that's going to go through. So I'm just going to go ahead and retreat. I renewed my friendship with Ethiopia. That gives me another 30 turns of protection. I'm not sure what to do with this trader. I was considering going for gold in order to maximize my gold income and use that to propel some of my cities forward. But I could also use them for internal purposes. For example, if I trade with my capital, I would get two food, two production, which could be a great way to boost some of these newer cities. Games of Recreation is finished, giving me access to the entertainment complex. I also decided that my best bet was to get as much gold as possible. I already have a really, really strong gold income, which means I'm going to be able to do a lot with my gold this game. All right, let's see if this third charge converts Vilnius. And it did, so I get the 100 gold for it. Perfect. And Buila finished its monument. I'm going to get a granary in here because I need this city to grow to actually be able to place my theater square. Pop down a lumber mill in Kinshasa because it's worth plus two production per turn. That should shave a few turns off of the amphitheater. Ancestral Hall finished in my capital. Let's get to work on some settlers. I'll also promote Magnus with the provision promotion, reassign him to the capital, and then I'll reassign Pingala over to Mabuji Mai so he can get the extra science and culture from there. Still leaves me with a bit of a loyalty problem in Ambuila but I should be able to pick up an extra governor title at Defensive Tactics to take care of that. Normally I would focus heavily on improving uh, Babylon and getting suzerainty of them, but Nazca is in this game and I could probably snatch up suzerainty from them pretty soon. And considering I'm about to start settling a massive piece of land with lots of desert, I think being suzerain of Nazca could be super useful because their suzerain bonus is the ability to produce the Nazca line, which provides plus one faith, plus one food and plus one production um, to desert tiles that are adjacent to it. And again, this is a luxury tile, so it's safe to chop the woods on it, which will instantly finish my granary or monument rather. And then I could go ahead and work on the granary or harbor is what I was trying to say. I think the granary is a little bit more important this game because I need growth in order to place my second district, which will of course be a theater square. Walls are finished in Abanzambata. I could improve some of these tiles, but I think I'm just going to get to work on the amphitheater. I need these as soon as possible. 
I'm already pretty late to picking them up, especially now that people are starting to really earn great rider points. Let's harvest out the settler in Abanza Congo, chop, and we can get the settler a few turns earlier. Now that I want to get to work on my harbors, I think I'm going to take out urban planning. Now I can plug in the veterancy card here and that'll give me a 30% boost. That should significantly speed up how fast I get my harbor since I do plan to start building one in my capital and then an abandon a Sunday. I have a thousand gold in the bank so I could go ahead and purchase a settler. The question is, is that worth it? Is that, thousand, is that the best way to spend a thousand gold right now? And in my opinion, I think the best way to spend a thousand gold is to actually hold on to it until I finish these harbors and instantaneously purchase the lighthouses. With that said, let's get to work on uh, serfdom so we can have an extra two build actions on my builders. I probably should have left out the Ilkum card and put in the production card. Finish the amphitheater in Kinshasa. And the most important thing to remember is that when you get an amphitheater, it actually doesn't help you get any tourism because you actually need to fill it with great works. And that means that this amphitheater is not very useful until I actually get those great works, which means I want to do some theater square festivals to, to fill it out. Machinery is finished, which means I have access to crossbowmen now. And Katango is now settled. Probably would have been okay to wait for feudalism, but the sooner I get the city settled, the better. It's not a very good city and there's not a whole lot of uses for a builder in here anyway. Let's work on apprenticeship now since I am starting to build mines and I'm going to want that plus one production from them. Mabuchi Mai finished the theater square. I definitely want to get to work on my amphitheater in here because that's directly related to my win condition. But I think I'll pop down the entertainment complex first to lock in its price and prevent any strategic resources from appearing here and ruining my plans. It would also be nice if I could continue to grow this city, so maybe a granary or a monument would be good to start spreading out. But I think my win condition is amphitheaters, so that's what I'm going to go for. That said, my culture is a little bit weak right now, so taking a little bit of time to get a monument would be very beneficial. I also need to start thinking about how I'm going to get to mass production because this is going to be a huge part of my overall strategy and I'm seven technologies away from getting it. I think this is going to be my primary focus now to get the shipyard because it just introduces so much production into my empire. Let's appoint a Manny. I eventually want to put a Manny into Nazca but I need her as a loyalty stick in Embuila for now. That'll keep this city from going into negative loyalty, which just alleviates one of my headaches in the short term. Another settler finished in Abanza Congo. I am really tempted to settle this city. It's kind of a meme city, but it would be really, really fun. I'd never really get much tourism off it, but I would get a lot of gold out of it. On the other hand, I could keep settling south and actually make use of the good land down here. Ooh, this apostle got the martyr promotion. That's huge for me, so I can go send him to get killed by Nubia. That'll get me a relic and relics are amazing for Congo because every relic gives you two food, two production and four gold. Let's trade with Nazca, not because it's a good trade route, but because it will give me a trading post here, which means every other trade route that I send through Nazca will be better in future. It's like a short term sacrifice for a long term gain. There's feudalism giving me access to serfdom. Let's go ahead and change our policies and plug in serfdom, which means every time we settle a city now, we'll get a five charge builder instead of a three charge builder. I think the next big civic pickup for us is civil service. That'll give us access to alliances. And since we have positive relationships with a bunch of AI, we'll get a lot of value from actually activating alliances. All right, let's just throw our apostle at enemy units until he dies to get that relic. Finish two harbors this turn, and now I can instantly purchase lighthouses. And that's great because it gives me extra food, extra housing, all that great stuff that you like in your cities. But more importantly, it also gives me access to extra traders. And Pinda is a very, very weak city in a lot of ways. So I think this city is going to want a trader. So I'll purchase one there for you. And I'll probably trade that to my capital to try to boost this city up. Abanza Congo, I'm also going to purchase a trader. And this one I'll use to trade internationally. Otherwise, though, this city is going to go back to producing settlers. Very first great writer, Murasaki Shikibu. So far, it looks like we've missed out on one, two, three, four great writers, which is an awful lot. Um, every great writer I miss is a great writer. I'm going to have to buy their great works later. Um, ideally, I should actually start looking to buy those great works too. I'm going to send this trade route from Mpinda to my capital, uh, partially for the road, partially for the two food and three production. If I manage to get my hands on another governor title, I can also promote Magnus with surplus logistics, which would be really helpful in getting Mpinda to grow. Considering three production is nearly half the city's current production, it really needed this trade route. Create our very first great work and we are finally making tourism. Speaking of, let's have a look at the tourism screen. Um, I think we are looking pretty okay at the moment. Nobody is running away with a massive amount of culture. 
So I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. The only person I'm worried about is this person here with 63 uh, on like uh, domestic tourists. That's kind of a scary amount to have at this stage of the game, considering I have 15. And now that I'm starting to generate tourism, exploring the map becomes a really, really big priority for me. I actually need to find those other civilizations in order to start generating uh, tourism pressure against them. So I'm going to pick up three scouts here. Oh man, oh, they're really, really expensive. Maybe I won't. I tell you what, I'll pick up a horseman and send him over to the west to see if I can uh, get the knowledge I need. Mabanzana Sunday has hit four population, which means I need to start thinking about when I'm going to place my theater square. Um, I tell you what I might do. I'm going to go ahead and purchase the lighthouse, get to work on two builders in here. Uh, because I need to improve this territory. Then the theater square is going to go on this tile right here. And the entertainment complex is going to go right there. And then that'll give me like a really good uh, setup for this city. Nazca wants me to train a catapult. So that's exactly what I'm going to do over in Mbanzambata. Let's settle this next city over here in the desert. And um, these are really, really well placed cities. These are really well placed cities because they have occupied most of the desert, which is low quality land, without actually having that many cities. I just need one more over here and then I'll have all of this desert under my command, which is great for seaside resorts in the late game. This city is going to struggle a little bit, however, so I might just get something like cheap, like a quadrary. This city is going to struggle a lot, um, which typically is the kind of city that I want to build a monument in in order to grow its borders because none of the nearby tiles are actually very good. All right, finally, I get to get a relic. Amazing. Look at this relic. Two food, two production, four gold, four faith, and eight tourism. That is absolutely mwah. chef's kiss. Perfect. Amazing. I'm so happy. Neat little trick about the border control treaty when the World Congress pops up. The AI always votes for themselves one time. So if you vote for yourself twice, you typically win this without any trouble. It's kind of a similar thing to the trade policy. As long as you have good relations with other civs, they'll usually vote for yourself. So you can just kind of throw a few votes at it and you'll definitely pick it up. Like I said, everyone voted for themselves once. I voted for myself twice and so I win it. Same deal for the trade policy because I have really good relations with a couple of people. They opted to vote for me and they will get a bunch of gold, but I'll get an extra trade route. I think I already had the extra trade route. So now I have room for two trade routes, which is really nice. Speaking of trade routes, I think I'll buy one in Quango to try to get this city up and running faster. Usually I use things like trade routes uh, in the early game to help really, really weak cities. I kind of forgot to actually place my aqueduct in Kinshasa and I'll also need to place my industrial zone soon. Alliances are unlocked. Let's renew our friendship with Menelik. He's currently doing really well on the science front and the culture front. So I think either of those would be good alliances to get with him. And since I do plan to do a bit of trading with Dido, I'll milk her for a bit of gold from open borders. I'll grab a research alliance with Dido so that I can make up for the fact that my science is pretty weak this game. And with the Ottomans, I'll get a cultural alliance so that he maybe feels like it's safe to forward settle near me. And then I'll switch the alliance type and get some cities for free. Next up, we're going to research guilds for the governor title and access to the Imbanza. The Imbanza is a unique district that replaces the neighborhood. It is super good. We're going to want one in every single city, not just for the food and gold but also because later on in the game, they let us build a shopping mall, which is a great source of extra tourism. Let's grab suzerainty of Nazca right now, because that'll actually enable me to start placing some Nazca lines and get some real value out of a city like Quango. I really want my diplomatic quarter this game and the best place to build it is my capital, but I'm trying to think where should I put it? I think on this jungle tile is my most viable spot, so I'll place it there. I'm not going to bother harvesting that, but having the diplomatic quarter is super nice because I get plus one diplomatic favor for each delegation from each foreign civilization. I don't get the extra envoy because I didn't build it next to my city center, but I do get the extra effect of being more defended against spies. Purchase the lighthouse in Embuila, then immediately start producing some traders. I'm three traders under my cap right now, and I need to get that under control. Pop down a Nazca line right here, and that'll improve some of the nearby tiles. Normally, I wouldn't consider harvesting things like wheat really important, but in this case, it's basically a free excuse to place down a third district in Kinshasa because it boosted it up to seven population. Let's place our industrial zone right there. Uh, we'll be building that immediately after the aqueduct. And speaking of the aqueduct, we're going to harvest it out right now by chopping, which allows us to place our entertainment complex. And then I can come up to Embuila and place my theater square on this tile too. And um, we're starting to really set up for our late game infrastructure now. I'm feeling really good about my city layouts. 
this game I, I feel like I spent a lot more time actually like paying attention to the details of it but we'll we'll go ahead and grab the industrial zone now and 10 turns from now we'll have a district that'll churn out a little bit of extra production for Kinshasa and potentially we'll provide uh, adjacency production through the regional buildings in the near future lovely there's guilds giving us access to some nice cards but more importantly it gives us access to the ambanza now i didn't really fill the ambanza into my build yet but there are plenty of places where it fits in very comfortably i think i'll throw one down here in Mbwila because this is a pretty good spot it'll give an extra adjacency to my harbor here which will bring it up to four gold it'll also provide a potential extra adjacency on my theater square if i go for another district in the future and these are half price, so there's no reason not to at least place them right now to lock in a very, very cheap price. Kinshasa will also get an Ambanza on one of these tiles, but we're going to work on the industrial zone first. There we go. All of my cities now have Ambanza and Batas or Ambanzas or whatever they're called uh, planned. So very soon we'll have a massive amount of extra food, gold and housing. We have a lot of trade routes this era, so I think Reform the Coinage is a good pickup for era score. Diplomatic service is not what I would normally go for at this stage of the game, but being able to pick up Spies and the Machiavellianism card feels really, really nice to me at this stage of the game. And then after that, I'll head up towards Merchant Republic for my tier two government. My major focus right now, though, is to start getting suzerainty of Babylon. So I'm going to assign a Mani there. And pretty much every envoy I pick up is going to go there as well. Tribal Village been sitting around for a while. Oh, knowledge of Castles. That's actually really, really good because my science is so bad. Grabbed myself my second great rider, and I'm slowly but surely filling up these amphitheaters. Let's do some harvesting over in Abanza Nasundi. That'll force this city up to a higher population level. Harvest the jungle as well to pop out that builder. Slap down the theater square where it belongs. And then next turn we can harvest this to boost the theater square along and place the entertainment complex. Now trading with my capital is worth five food and four production, which is amazing because I have a really weak setup with a lot of my cities. So being able to trade with my capital and make up for some of those shortcomings is going to be super helpful. The great thing about settling a crappy desert city like this when you're suzerain of Nazca is you can just throw down Nazca lines and it instantly makes the city better by giving it extra food and faith. I really, really like how it works on coastal tiles, at least for the faith. In really, really bad cities like this that have absolutely no tile prospects in the next like 50 turns, I almost always go monument, granary. I almost always go watermill, granary, monument. This maximizes the amount of food, growth, and tile projection that this city can get. Eventually this city will be useful, but not before it gets a trade route. Speaking of which, I can actually buy a trade route in here and hopefully that'll be able to reach my capital because that would turn this city into being terrible, into being tolerable. That's it for me for this episode. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.